Hi, my name's Lucy. I'm a technical instructor working in the cardiorespiratory team um, at Mid Yorkshire Hospitals NHS Trust. I'm going to talk to you about energy conservation. Many people with respiratory conditions often feel tired, worn out and get very breathless. Um, energy conservation is about how we're going to manage that energy, how we're going to use it in the best way for you to be able to achieve the things that you want to do. The easiest way to work about energy conservation is think of what we call the four P's. Now the four P's are prioritising, planning, pacing and positioning. So I'm going to explain a little bit to you about each of those areas. Planning allows us to think about the activities that we need to achieve, what time scale we need to achieve them in, and also how we're going to achieve them. So it can be really useful to plan what we're doing so that we don't try and squeeze everything into one day. Sometimes if you're having a good day with your condition, you want to try and get everything done. Planning can also involve changing the times that you normally do things. So for example, if you normally get up and have your bath or your shower in the morning but your time is very busy, could you do that at a different time in the day? Could you do it later in the evening when you're not so busy? So we're going to move on to pacing. Pacing is the next section. This is about still allowing us to achieve an activity, to do something, but we're going to have to slow our pace or do it in a slightly different way to achieve it. One of the things we need you to do is anticipate when you might become breathless. So if you know an activity is gonna get you to that stage, try and take a break beforehand, slow down your pace, think about what you're trying to achieve and giving yourself longer to do it. We want you to avoid what we call the boom and bust cycle. So that's having loads of energy and suddenly using it to do lots and lots of things and then having no energy whatsoever and not being able to achieve anything. When you have a long-term condition, you're going to have good days and you're going to have bad days and you're going to want to make the most of the good days. But if you pack loads of things into those days, then you're going to find that your bad days will go on and on. So it's all about doing a little bit each day, achieving what you want to do, but not doing too much. So positioning is about either using certain positions to help you with your breathlessness management, and there is another video about that, or using aids and adaptations to help you achieve something, which means you're gonna use less energy to do what you want to do. So, some people need essential equipment. So, for example, if you've got somebody who can no longer manage the stairs at home, they're gonna have a stair lift, and that will mean that they can get up and down those stairs, use less energy, and give them the required leftover energy to do things that they need to do. The other thing you can do is try organising your environment better. So for example, if you are a regular tea or coffee drinker, try setting up your kitchen so that everything's near to each other, so you're not moving across the kitchen. Prioritising. We want you to think about how you're going to spend your day, how you're going to spend that energy, and what do you need to do on that day? What would you like to do? So I like to think of a little of an analogy in monetary terms. So I want you to think about when you wake up in the morning, maybe you've got £100 worth of energy to spend that day. Where are you going to use it? How are you going to spend it? So I'm going to give you uh, details of an example. Meet Ted. Ted is a 64-year-old man with COPD who lives with his dog, Angus. Each day, Ted has a similar routine. He struggles to get out of bed and gets quite breathless, putting on his slippers, which costs him four pounds of energy. Ted then goes downstairs to let Angus out into the back garden, costing another four pounds of energy. Now, Ted goes back upstairs, which costs three pounds of energy, to head to the bathroom for a shower and to get dressed. All this costs a whopping 21 pounds of energy. After getting dressed, Ted comes back downstairs to make breakfast, which he then carries to the front room to eat whilst watching morning TV. This costs nine pounds of energy. After breakfast, Ted takes his dishes to the kitchen to wash and tidy up, costing three pounds of energy. Ted's total cost for his morning routine is 44 pounds of energy. If Ted made some small changes to his routine, he could save a significant amount of energy. If Ted used some small equipment in the bedroom and bathroom, it would make getting washed and dressed far easier. Also, if Ted stayed downstairs after letting Angus out and ate breakfast at the kitchen table, it would reduce his number of trips up and down the stairs. All in all, this could save Ted around 20 pounds of energy each morning. If you can make some simple changes with the things that you have to do that allow you to do the things that you'd like to do, 
that can have a really positive outlook for you. The nature of long-term conditions mean that even if you follow the four P's perfectly, you will still have good days and bad days. But if you do follow them, the good days will be better and the bad days will be less. We want you to manage your condition and not allow your condition to manage you.